Hi, before I start, I'd like to thank Aitman Foundation and UNESCO for giving me this space to present my thoughts. It has been a privilege and I'd like to take this opportunity to speak about sustainable supply chains, a topic I'm passionate about and actively working upon. The US and Canada have been witnessing the hottest temperatures yet, which are leading to devastating fires and droughts, further exasperating the inequalities among communities. One of the major contributors to these extreme climate changes has been the overutilization of natural resources, which is leading to an ever receding natural habitat. Without the natural control systems in place, the disaster causing the events are extremely pronounced. But let's examine the underlying cause further, overutilization of the natural resources. Research suggests that there are enough resources on this earth to meet the basic needs of the current population. And yet, as of 2021, 690 million people worldwide go to sleep hungry every day. The reasons can be found in the wastage of products, which end up in landfills eventually, unequal distribution of income, and unsustainable usage of resources. Industrial revolution, for better or worse, has ignited the consumeristic revolution. And ever since, Industries have been scrambling to get their piece of the profit. And in the process, they have created a zero-sum game for millions of people all around the world. Smith asserted that no society can surely be flourishing and happy, of which the far greater part of the members are poor and miserable. Sustainable supply chains are one of the most powerful solutions available to us. To attain that equitable and green society. While the concept now sounds mainstream and a little overused even, not many of the companies have managed to transform their supply chains. To begin with, sustainable supply chain management is the management of supply chain operations, resources, information and funds in order to maximize the supply chain profitability, while at the same time minimizing the environmental impact and maximizing the social well-being. And supply chain inculcate activities from product design to procurement and production to customer delivery. So therefore imagine this, a product produced from sustainably sourced raw materials, produced and transported using renewable sources of energy. And these products can then be composted and recycled where applicable and sent back to the producers to be made into new consumables, which will again be produced and transported using renewable energy. But that sounds a little like the Industry 4.0 version of a fairy tale, isn't it? Even to us, who believes concepts such as transparency, interconnectedness and immense data power exist. And we always wonder why is that? Well, the immediate answer is in the trade-offs between the triple bottom line, profit, people and planet. If we are to produce a more sustainable product, it costs us more. And because of the income inequalities mentioned before, the sustainable product becomes a luxury and not a necessity. But of course, not all companies can make a profit in the luxury goods market. And that there is the underlying reason at the end of the day. Profit. Much of the research on sustainable supply chains is based on the question, does it pay to be green and sustainable? And uh, this is posed in a variety of ways. Given the historical treatment of any company trying to go the sustainable way, the focus on economic implications of being sustainable was initially understandable. Evidence that addressing environmental or social issues positively impacted profits was a way to gain legitimacy in a field where it was assumed that such actions often harmed profits and that the social responsibility of a business was to be profitable. But that we're still debating the economic value of sustainability today is indicative of outdated assumptions and a very limited stakeholder perspective in much of the supply, sustainable supply chain management literature. 
secondly when asking questions like does it pay to be sustainable what they are effectively asking is does being more sustainable than the other unsustainable supply chains improve economic performance and therefore the positive environmental or economic outcomes are often a reduction not an elimination in harm the current research and business models seem to be focused on a narrow view of the stakeholders affected by these solutions which while solving one side of the equation are causing harm on the other side and speaking of current the research on sustainable supply chains seems to focus on validating the already existing models while turning a blind eye to innovative and newer models either by averaging them or treating them as outliers and lastly the existing tools for measurement of supply chain sustainability are not rigorous and do not account for the impact of the complete supply chain well there are solutions to all the above mentioned problems the question of does it pay to be sustainable often ignores the equally valid claims of stakeholders without an economic stake in a chain the and therefore the answer lies in the adoption of of a more multidisciplinary or transdisciplinary research that explicitly looks at supply chain from the perspective of other stakeholders such as governments ngos and local communities this perspective of the supply chains answer the question of how to build a holistic and a truly sustainable supply chain by involving various viewpoints of the stakeholders the measuring tools can also be improved to understand the effect of the supply chain on all the stakeholders along the complete entire supply chain and also this helps them think out of outside of their bounded rationality creating sustainable supply chains will likely require changes in both what and how of providing value and a complete rethinking of what value means this will require changes in both practices and supply chain business models and change always requires incentive both for the companies to make their supply chain sustainable and for the customers to buy the products hence produced today research also argues that social concerns are emerging as the key challenge in sustainable supply chains yet they remain poorly understood because the research until now has been focused on the environmental impact of the supply chains a well constructed supply chain could extensively help local and impoverished communities who are even today are invisible yet a crucial part of all the supply chains Another unseen consequence of consumerism and industrial revolution is social exclusion a phenomenon in which the commercialization of agriculture reduced the variety of the crops produced and hence left local communities without an alternative but to overexploit their resources out of desperation and made the entire food supply chain vulnerable and unreliable The base of the pyramid theory and the stakeholder theories of supply chain provides a solution where these issues can be resolved by including the suppliers and stakeholders at the very end of the supply chain to increase transparency and provide a stable economic income. But it's not so simple to practice it as it is in theory because these communities lack trust and literacy to understand the importance of stable income. and they often sell to a uh, sell in a one off offer to the highest bidder and they are justified in not trusting given that the previous attempts at agricultural reforms have resulted in social disruption in the future government and industry could improve trust by engaging local communities in early stages of policy development it is also suggested that a basic education targeting the impoverished communities is utterly needed many of the above suggested solutions can easily be implemented using the technological tools at our disposal such as big data blockchain internet of things quantum technologies artificial intelligence and robotics all these tools play an important role and are proved to be efficient in reducing the impact of supply chains on the environment 
and once again the research had only considered these effects from a singular point of view that is from the point of view of reducing the impact of a single supply chain and does not clearly point out the effect on environment because of using these technologies and therefore rather than trying to think retroactively to make the existing business models more sustainable we should also consider approaching the problems from the ground up and come up with innovative and new business models that eliminate the negative effects rather than reduce them and the government and control agencies could play an important role in incentivizing companies and consumers to do so with that i once again thank you for this amazing opportunity and look forward to seeing many incredible initiatives from you thank you